What's going on everybody? I think we're live here. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of metal detecting with the Xterra Pro today. I've gotten a couple kind of odd signals I wanted to investigate out here, so let's get situated and then let's get into this, hey? So far on the day, honestly, I've been kind of just scouting out this spot maybe for 15 minutes or so, and I've gotten a couple pieces of aluminum foil, I think maybe a bottle cap, and that's about it so far, so... Let me make sure we're actually gonna go live here though. Are we live? All right, yeah, I think we're live. All right, uh, let me try to dig this one up real quick and then I'll check in with the uh, the old chat. If you guys are just uh, joining me, um, this is a lot, this was a live stream. It's live right now, but I'll try to switch it over to two recovery speed. I thought this one would be interesting to try because it's very like a kind of a faint signal. I'm not actually 100% sure if there's even anything under there. Two recovery speed, it sounds maybe a little bit better, but then three recovery speed. You're barely getting anything on that at three recovery speed. So let's try it. Let's try to see if we can get this thing out. Target ID, it's kind of bouncy, 70 to 79. I got a little iron grunt in there. Today, I'm gonna to be trying to dig up a good amount of iron signals. I know that sounds kind of counterproductive, but I was digging up some aluminum foil out here and they were giving me like iron grunts on them for some reason, so. I'm not really sure what was up with those iron grunts on the aluminum, but let's see. Will this signal come out? Is it a deep one? Let's drop down on them with our pinpointer real quick. I think we're alive. Let me get back over here real quick. I'll pull up the chat in just a second if I'm able to. Uh, <laughs> Hello? I don't know if this is going to be a recoverable signal. Let me try to switch it over to beach two. It's giving me not a very good signal at all. Uh, let's take a couple more scoops on him, I guess, just to investigate. I feel like I'm already too deep. Maybe a little bit of iron with this signal. It could just be an ultra deep like piece of scrap. What the heck? Take one or two more scoops on them then we'll get back down there with our pinpointer. See what we're working with here, man. Wait, it's out. Looky there, it is actually out. That was a deep one, man. What is it? Yeah, that was definitely a deep one, dude. Yo, it's actually a, looks like it's a coin. I mean, I guess I could have been slightly off. I must have been slightly off on that one, man. It's a 1979 penny right there. Okay, okay. Yeah, look at that crater. That's like a foot deep freaking crater right there. Uh, let me try to pull up the chat uh, with you guys. I know there's probably a couple people sitting in the house real quick. I've been having a little bit of trouble today, like pulling up the live feed or the live chat rather. Uh, it's really making me play an ad. <laughs> All right, I think we're back. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing today? Uh, what do you guys Whoops. Know? What's up, Danny boy? Teacher David's in the building. How you guys doing today? I hope you're doing all right. I got. I hope you got some plans to go out and do some metal detecting today. So I guess maybe two recovery speed because I could barely hear that coin um, in three recovery speed. So it probably was a deeper one. Not too bad, not too bad. All right, let's do some swinging, I guess, eh? What's up, Incognito? What's up, Ricardo? Coiled to the soil. What's up, man? He says hello from the UK. What time is it in the UK right now? 
All right, I am gonna dig up a couple of these pieces of iron, so bear with me. This one's giving me all iron signals, so I would assume it's all iron, but I wanna be sure with this machine. I've dug up some signals a couple times and I've had to like second guess uh, the signal. That is a bobby pin, rusty crusty bobby tent pin. Good morning, Florida dirt digger. What's up, Joe New Nugent? Joe Nugget? <laughs> What's up, L Monkey Super Freak? What's going on, Troy? Hope you guys are ready for some pull tabs and aluminum foil today, because there ain't no guarantee we're gonna find anything good, but we're gonna try. This one is definitely probably another little piece of iron. Sit right here. Yep, it sure is. I have no idea what that is. Tip off of a rusty screw or something. What's up playing in the dirt? What's up, Dan? It's a pretty nice day out here at the beach, honestly. more iron we'll skip up a couple of these iron signals i don't want to bore you guys to sleep but definitely we're going to dig up a couple of like the bouncy ones here's a decent signal right there 77 78 you guys want the settings right now i'm running it doesn't really matter too much but i'm in beach one 20 uh sensitivity pretty close to stock settings here i think 21 volume uh, we're running two tone which I think cleans up the sounds of the tones a little bit and then two recovery speed let's see if this is a big aluminum can or something decent under the hole use the old pinpoint I don't know, does it sound like a small pinpoint? Still got to get familiar uh, with this machine for sure. It's out. 81 out of the hole. Sounds pretty good. I think I'm liking this two-tone out at the beach. What do we have? All right, that's our second recovered coin of the day. Not too bad. It's a nice crusty Roosevelt dime for you guys. 10 cents closer to the manticorn, baby. <laughs> Not quite, but what's up, William? He says, let's get some jewelry. Let's. Dance is better than finding paper clips and paper cuts. <laughs> Actually, I already got a paper clip out here today, Dan. <laughs> I'm finding them too, man. I'm finding them too. All right, let's keep on swinging through. There's another kind of high conductive right there, but definitely bouncy on that one. I don't know if you guys can see the target ID with the sun's glare, but it's reading like 60, 75, 80. Bouncy on the target ID, but let's check them out. Sounds pretty good, I guess. Detector guess pull tab. This one's 65, you got a guess on that one? 65, pretty solid. Come on, little buddy. What's up, Ralph? What do you got for us? Hello? Okay. That's another coin. That one looks like uh, it's been through the ringer a little bit more than the other two. Crusty zinc penny. Been down there for a little while, I think. Not too bad, not too bad. Dan says, I, have, I haven't been out in two weeks. Weed eater yesterday. <laughs> what? You found a weed eater yesterday, Dan? A weed whacker? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Illinois, I agree with that. If they can drop a coin, they can drop a ring. Good guess, you two. Dan and uh, JQ guess Penny. We're just trying to get a little bit more familiar with the Xterra out here today. 
So this one's probably aluminum foil, but this is kind of a good example of what I was talking about earlier. That like uh, some of the aluminum foil, the smaller pieces definitely ring up kind of like iron. Which makes me a little bit nervous that if I'm skipping by like uh, iron signals, I could potentially be skipping by the small gold or at least the aluminum foil. I like to dig up the aluminum foil when I'm out here, you know? Aluminum. I mean, it hits it though. For just running eight kilohertz on this machine, it seems to do pretty good on the aluminum. But definitely, I don't think it really uh, IDs it too solid which isn't a huge deal to me. When I'm at the beach, I'm basically uh, digging just about everything. So as long as it gives me a sound of some type. Is the weather good enough for you guys to get out there and go swinging today sometime? Got any plans to get out on the old home site? The 1800s church? crusty bone down there just low and slow today's gonna be kind of uh, I don't know if I would quite call it a relaxing hunt but I'm not all too energized today so I think we're gonna kind of just chill out yes this one is sounding like iron but I'm making sure that's what it is Wait, see, look there. Could be a bottle cap, maybe, but better be a bottle cap. Yeah, it sounds like irony. In the hole, it was nothing but iron. Out of the hole, it's giving me a little high squeaker. There it is, though. It's just a, I don't know, ball of rust of some type. <laughs> Detector MG asks, what's the best WS6 Master or Equinox? I think it's probably preference-based. I hate saying that, but you could probably ask like uh, 20 different people, 10 of each with both of, both of those machines, and they would probably tell you like uh, their machine is the best, you know? I think they'll both find stuff. Which one do you think you like best? Come on, get this piece of iron out of here. Move on, huh? Move on. What's up, Troy? He says, after work, off to the beach. I like it. I like hearing that. What's up, Steve Spears? This is hello from Tennessee. Good morning, find the gold. Appreciate those well wishes. So this is another one that's kind of like giving me iron, but also giving me a high signal, so I really want to investigate a lot of these today. Now it's a little bit more of just a uh, iron squeak. Before I turn the camera on, uh, pulled a couple pieces of aluminum that sounded pretty freaking close to iron, so I just want to make sure, you know, some testing and experimenting today. This one's definitely got to be some iron. Sounds like crap. Uh, what's up, Blaine? He says, hello for Maine. Blaine for Maine. What's going on, Blaine? I think I'm probably going to leave that one behind. Wasn't getting a hit on it with my pinpointer, so it might be deep. Try to get onto a better signal. So like my first impression is telling me that's probably iron, but take one or two scoops on it. You got to learn your machine, man. You can never really make any assumptions, I think, when you first get a machine. This doesn't sound good, though. I probably would skip this by maybe normally, but... What the heck's going on? Dan asks, Legend or Mind Lab 900? I've never used a Mind Lab 900, so I can't really speak on that one. 
make the assumption this one's probably deep iron again, but it's definitely hard to tell. Let me turn my recovery speed back to two or three, I meant. Yeah, that one definitely, now it's telling me more obviously it's iron. Skip it up, man. Keep on going. Where's the gold? Is there any gold out here? Where's the golden doubloon? <laughs> the freaking golden doubloon. Blaine asks, you prefer your mine lab to your simplex? I think it just depends where I'm hunting, to be completely honest with you. I've always preferred my simplex at the park over the beach, but then I think I kind of prefer my mine labs at the beach over the park. I really do think it's just like a preference thing, honestly, but beach two down by the Wata. Some iron. Running delta pitch down by the wet sand getting a little bit of some type of noise. Try to pay close attention to any potential signals down here. Good morning, Brenda. Apparently my stream just dropped out. I don't know if we're back now or what, but are we back? I might be back. What's up, Blue? What's up, Dennis? I don't know if we're back or what. It said I lost connection. Hopefully we're back. If not, I guess I'm just metal detecting from now on. <laughs> All right. Hopefully we're back. It's like I'm on the freaking west coast of Florida, man. There's no buildings in sight. How do I have bad connection? I need to switch my uh, mobile provider or something. Iron by the wet. Let's try it. <laughs> Make sure it's iron and not the gold doubloon. I think it's out. Looks like we're digging up nothing but iron today. That's not the truth. There's another bobby pin right there. A little bit of crusty rusty. Dennis, I'm uh, I'm kind of liking experimenting with it. You always have to consider the price point on some of these new machines. I don't expect every new machine to outperform out the last new machine, you know? Price is definitely a factor, but... It seems to run decent by the wet sand. I've already found gold with this machine, so... That doesn't really say much about a machine. You just have to swing over the right spot to find something like that. But I think it's a good like entry level, mid level machine for sure. Maybe a good backup to like one of your higher end machines, but I'm still learning it. Eric, uh, I haven't really seen enough on that new simplex to give thoughts on it. Like, my, my first thoughts are, like, I'm just honestly kind of tired of new metal detectors. Every time I'm, like, getting used to using one, another one is on its way, so... I feel like they're kind of becoming, like, phones nowadays where they're just, like... I mean, sometimes you get better performance for a lower price, but in a lot of cases, you're just getting like a little tiny bit extra and you're having to pay more for it. So I don't know. New machines, unless they make the pull tab slayer that eliminates pull tabs completely and can like, what's this? Ah, paperclip. <laughs> yeah, the pull tab slayer they need to make. Dan says, NYC says there is over a thousand rings on the beach. I can't find them. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Dan. Silver Surfer says, pay your phone bill. Oh, I just got like a notification on my last live stream, though, that I'm using up too much of my like hotspot data. <laughs> so I might have to cut back on the live streams. They're going to throttle me soon. 
Jesse says, good news from Nocta and the Legend. If you bought the original Legend, you can upgrade to the new lighter carbon upper shaft at a big discount. I like to hear that. I think that the Legend is going to kind of embrace this size coil that's on the uh, Xterra Pro. So pick up a little bit of trash. Garbaggio. Dennis, that's true. It's the hunter, not the machine. And sometimes it's just, sometimes it's the location, not the hunter or the machine. You know, if you put a complete amateur on a really hot location with a cheap machine, if there's silvers or gold within the first couple inches of the ground, they're probably going to find it. trying to really pay attention for any like faint signals down here I don't want to just go for the obvious ones because most metal detectors can hit those obvious coins like two inches under the ground you know I'm gonna dig them up don't get me wrong but all right what's up Petro Troy you see me are you here at the beach <laughs> you might take a quick look around I know uh, Jephthah, he was one of one of my viewers here that hung out in the live stream. He met me down at a beach recently. It was a pretty fun hunt. Mostly iron out here. What's up, John? John Bryant. Roy says, I have both the XPW6 Master. You're loving the Master? I like that lightweight setup, honestly, Roy. Here we gotta leave our uh, leave our prints in the sand. Make sure that it was known we've been here. Uh, maybe go up by the volleyball nets a little bit. Check out under the nets. Very likely iron, but give me a little bit of a high squeak. Petro Pastry says the Xterra is uncomfortable to grip. How does it feel to me? I'm gonna be honest with you, like, it's not that bad to me. Like, it's not a deal breaker to me. I think what would be useful is like those grip stoppers they make for the MindLab 600. I've never used one of them, but actually how I like to hold my the machine is like almost like this. I don't know if you can see my hand placement. There's like this little nub that's right here on the back. I feel like if you grip it like this, it's a little bit worse than if you grip it like this almost. It's kind of awkward. I wish they put like a little divot for your finger right there that would like kind of grip your finger. I think that would help a lot, but I don't know. I've been swinging around like the Equinox with the 15 inch coil and the Legend with like the, uh, what coil is that? I think it's like the LG35, which is a big boy coil. So considering I've been using kind of heavy machines, this machine doesn't really feel any heavier than those other detectors. Yep, Dennis, and sometimes it's just luck. Sometimes it's about swinging over that right spot at the right time. What's up, Rob Royal? This is Hay from Toronto. What's up, Grandma Kelly? That was a little bottle cap cleaned up for you. What have I been hearing about like Bud Light? Have you guys heard stuff about that? There's like controversy or something surrounding Bud Light. I don't know if I even want to get into it. I haven't heard much, but I've just heard a bunch of people like, I guess people have always kind of crapped on Bud Light and Budweiser. <laughs> I don't really have a preference, I'm gonna be honest. I don't drink much beer. It seems like the average Florida man has the preference of Corona. Here's what aluminum foil sounding like right now. I actually should be using Beach One because I'm up back in the dry sand. They say use Beach One for uh, like dry and wet sand and then Beach Two for surf and underwater.
I might have to change my tone break a little bit. I think you can do that on this machine. Just some aluminum. Incognito says, I dug a lot of treasure traps yesterday, but scored a ring number 22 and a 20 inch chain. Heck yeah, Incognito. Some iron, let's dig up that one. I wanna make sure it's iron, I was saying that earlier. Listen now. Sound a little bit better. Could still be iron, but. Giving me a high tone in there, mostly iron, but. What is it? A little screw. Ah, did that just fall right in my pouch? I think it did. It's a rusty screw. Went right in there. <laughs> Vix is F Bud Light. <laughs> Dan, they're going woke. Go woke, go broke. <laughs> yeah, I've just been hearing like a lot of drama and controversy surrounding it. I kind of want to get some info. What's up, Starburst? What's going on, NB? You're not late, man. It's all right. We rarely ever uh, schedule these. I scheduled it for 1030 and then I went live at like 1015. So you never know when I'm going to go live. Dennis says, I thought I got lucky yesterday. Found two wannabe silver rings. In the junk box they went. <laughs> hey, wannabe rings still sometimes like feel good. Unless you think they're silver at first. I can see actually right here. I don't know if you guys can see that in the sand. Somebody was playing volleyball right here and they like, is that something right on top? No. <laughs> Uh, when they play volleyball, you can definitely tell, number one, the imprints in the sand, like the foot imprints, but a lot of the times they'll draw a square around the play area. So I'm gonna try to grid this square off just a little bit. Maybe nothing too significant, but 20 sensitivity, two tone. See if they got any fresh drops through here. Ohio says it does not let me comment on Starburst channel. It should let you comment Starburst. I definitely did not banhammer you. Unless one of the moderators did, but I don't think that they did. I'll check that though when I get home Starburst. I'll make sure you're not banhammered. You know what I really do need to do though, is when I first put together this machine, I didn't tighten down this like little hex bolt right there and it's causing like a, it's a little bit loose right there. It needs to be tightened down. No, oh, I wish, no, oh, I wish you were here. <laughs> People playing that copyrighted music. Just please, YouTube, don't ban me. Mostly iron, it's giving me a high tone on the right hand swing. Make sure it's not some good in disguise. Sounds kind of better now. Interesting. Deep one though. It's out. So that, wasn't that signal in the hole sounding like iron? I'm pretty freaking sure it was. Scroll that one back and check it out. Let's see what it actually is, but. It's a pull tab. Uh, yeah, like, was, wasn't was that signal iron? I think that was an iron signal in the hole. I don't know. 
Oh, I think I'm gonna keep digging out those iron signals just in case. Dennis asked Austin, what is a private video? That's when you have a video like public, like so everyone can see it. There's an option that you can put a video on private, which basically just means that like people can't see it anymore. Rob says two gold, one silver and nine junkers. Heck yeah. How long did that take you to get Rob? Was that one day? Starburst is back. What's up Starburst? Don't you give me that dirty look Starburst. What are you doing? Starburst is giving me the evil eye. I'm curious about that signal though. I have noticed a couple deep signals on this machine have read up like iron. So I'm gonna have to look back on that one. Pretty sure that pull tab was ringing up as iron before I dig it out of the hole. So I like, I don't like to speak too soon on any machine because it takes a while to learn all like the quirks about a detector. It's hard to say like, hey, is this machine better than that one when I've only used it realistically a couple times. The features on it are nice, but definitely starting to learn some of the like downfall quirks, you know? Dennis, you thought you were banned? <laughs> As far as I know, no one is banned at all. Not even spammers or anything. Dan says, find a 1943 penny red worth 230K. Holy moly. What's up, WTX? This one also sounded like iron. Let's see if we pull it out of the hole if it's still iron. Where has it gone? Negative 16 in the hole. Still iron out of the hole now. Negative 16. Make sure, man. Make sure. Make sure it's not the gold chain. Nah, it's definitely iron. <laughs> it's uh, probably half of a bobby pin. I'm underneath some uh, volleyball nets right now, so potential's over here. You never know. That's what's up, Rob. He says that one month so far, about seven times out. Heck yeah. All right, I'm gonna leave that iron in there. Dig out a couple more of these, make sure they're staying iron. I don't want to be fooled. I would not always dig like iron signals like this. Sometimes I do for like karma points, but I'm really just trying to get familiar with this machine. Make sure I'm not skipping by nothing good, you know? Another bobby pin, bunch of bobby pins in this volleyball net area. Heck yeah, Starburst. Petro says, I'm about to detect a local park after a three day festival. I like to hear that, Petro. You're gonna find some goods out there, huh? What's your technique for hunting a park after a, a festival or something like that? Are you gonna go for mostly surface drops or are you just gonna hunt it out like normal? I've never really made it to a spot like that, but I would think maybe like, maybe go for like surface drops first, pump the sensitivity way down and kind of just scan the top of the ground. I don't know though. I don't know if you guys can hear the creak in my arm cuff. I'm not sure exactly how long we've been live. Hopefully the live stream doesn't cut out on us. Is there anything in the volleyball nets at all? I was over here a couple days ago with the XP Deus and my first signal of the day was a piece of jewelry. Believe it or not, it's 
probably happened to me like two times in my lifetime of detecting. I would assume like thousands of outings. All right, let's go on this side under the net. <laughs> under the volleyball net. They were consuming their candy. Uh, we got a comment that says, use Equinox coil. Which one, the 11 inch coil? Maybe we'll try to use the Equinox coil one of these times. I kind of like this size coil though. Swoopy! Who you just saw or what? That same song that I sent you? That same song? Huh? That's the song. What? Oh yeah? Yeah? When were they there? I guess At that beach? Uh, one of the episodes is that beach. Destiny was just telling me apparently the guys from Pond Stars were down at one of our local beaches. Which one? Like the main dude? I think like all of them. Or like, who was it? Chum Lee? I didn't I'm not that familiar with the series, familiar with the series but. Yeah. They're probably a long gone by now, huh? Oh yeah, probably. And you saw there was a dude with the metal detector down there with the vanquish? Yeah, was <laughs> the vanquish. Was he on uh like he was recorded? There's a whole camera crew, yeah. Uh I would have been gone. I don't want to be on none of that. <laughs> yeah. A spaghetti food truck. Yes, don't about it. You're gonna eat spaghetti at the beach. That's what you want. Got a little tiny squeaker right here. If they have something to drink, hook me up. Huh? I don't think they're open yet. They're not open? They got the drinks, right? Oh, I still have a drink in the car. Thanks, sweet. Destiny's dropping the info on us. Isn't Chumley in prison? That You might be right. Look at that bouncy guy. A little bit of iron in him. I don't know. Yeah, you might be right. Chumley might be locked up. I only really got into that show like with the YouTube clips. I never really watched it on TV. I haven't had cable TV in a long, long time. Come on, baby, please. Wait, you see that? Oh, we got something, everybody. We got something right there. Yes, dude, yes. Look at that. We got something, baby. Doesn't sound very good on the detector. I don't know, it's kind of reading high. Holy smokes. Uh, does it have a marking? Got some gemstones in there. Uh, oh man. I don't know, it's reading kind of high, so I very highly doubt gold. I'm trying to look for a marking, maybe silver or something though. Looks pretty clean. Let me try to bring it up to my eyes. See if I see anything on there. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really see any markings yet, but it's definitely crusty in there. I don't know. Let me, let me close it and then put it back on the ground and see what it reads up as. Giving me an absolutely horrible signal in the hole. It was kind of like iron too. Let's see if it gives us a better signal. all over the place on the target ID though. Three. It's like actually reading zero too, like iron. 24, negative eight, negative 16. I have no idea. 
It could just be maybe junk, but I'm not sure. I like it. It sure looks shiny though. Let's add it to the pouch, keep on going. That was definitely not a good signal in the hole though. That was another one of those sketchy ones that I was even maybe considering it being iron. Two recovery speed though on that one. Let's turn it back to two. Still in the volleyball area too. That's what's up, dude. Where's the other one? So the more I use this machine, like the more kind of I question the iron signals under the sand. Which is like, I guess it's not a, it's not a complete downfall, but I can't be I, like confident when I swing over an iron signal that it's actually iron. I feel like I have to dig it up because I don't know what it is. Bring up the chat again real quick. Good find, better than foil. Yeah, it was. Some iffy signals will fool you, yep. Especially those earrings, those open hoop ones. They're never like uh, solid on the target ID. It doesn't matter what machine you're using. Like when an earring is like broken open like that, it doesn't give you a good conductive signal usually. Even on like the XP Deus too, it does that. Just kind of go low and slow under this volleyball net here. I found still to this day, I think one of my best finds with the simplex underneath one of these volleyball nets. I looked the thing up online and like the pendant alone was like $1,100. It was a little anchor pendant, 14 karat gold with real diamonds in it. But I found it with the simplex, you know? Here's another one that's like iron, negative 13. I had one high squeak on it. Let's make sure it's iron. This one probably is, but I don't know. See how I'm getting, I'm getting like a couple high tones in it. It's deep though. Kind of lost the signal. I'm probably gonna make the assumption that this one's junk, but yeah, that one's negative 14 out of the hole. I see the rust in the sand. Junk jewelry at least? No, look at that little tiny piece of probably another bobby pin honestly dug up like five of those over here you know some people too argue that if you don't dig out the iron signals there could potentially be like a good high conductive or non-ferrous signal in with the iron i think at a beach it's not that likely to happen because how spread out the targets are but if somebody dropped like their bottle cap in their gold ring in the same hole if you weren't digging up the bottle caps, I guess you'd never find the gold ring. But the likelihood of something like that is like very, very low. Just like on some of these like, um, uh, like tests, like depth test and stuff. Like I see some people testing, which it's, it's good for novelty and just experimenting. But I see a lot of people putting like silver half dollars and stuff and kind of seeing the max depth on a silver half dollar. Like in my lifetime of metal detecting, I don't know if I will ever find a silver half dollar with a metal detector. Like that, it doesn't really matter that much to me, you know? The spots that I'm hunting, I'm not looking for a 15 inch silver half dollar, you know? So it's good to know these things. Like I said, it's sometimes good for like experience or experimental sake. But well, like in real case use, like you want to know, like is a, a non-ferrous signal under the sand going to give you an iron reading? Like that's more important to me than can a machine hit a silver half dollar 15 inches under the ground. How does a machine react to a gold ring like six inches under the sand? That's more important to me.
probably some junk. Let's dig them out real quick and then maybe we'll go for more, some more solid ones. 15, negative 15. Some more iron, rusty screw. Dennis says, my first outing with the Knox, I found a huge, hu a huge hoop serpent earring. Rang up, rang up a five, turned out to be 18K. Heck yeah. What's up, Night Sky? Great Lakes Adventure. What's up, Great Lakes? Uh, metal detecting Northwestern Wisconsin says, I've dug Silver's Dew. John Bryant says, Silver Half Dollar was my first coin find. Heck yeah. How deep was that, man? What's up, Billy? We're doing good. Searching for some jewelry. We got a little piece so far today. Let's get back in our little line underneath the volleyball net. Just kind of going low and slow underneath the net. I noticed that there was like a, a, a line drawn in the sand, like a play line. I don't know if you guys can see it, it's right here to my left. They were definitely playing a game and this is the inner boundaries. Sometimes I like checking outside the boundary too because if they bring like equipment with them, a lot of the time they'll set like their backpacks and stuff. Thing sounds huge. Could be the iPhone. Yeah, if you don't mind, I'll come grab it. Northwestern says, I've dug a silver half and silver dollar and gold rings. The tests are just to see what your machine is capable of and see how it sounds. Yeah, I never take those tests as fact though, because like, I don't know. I, I do agree that, I think sounds huge. Like I think testing and experimenting is good to get like a kind of a general idea, but I do not take that fact when like you put two machines head to head and one of them can hit, you know, a silver half dollar and the other one slightly is like, maybe doesn't hit it as good. A lot of people will take those tests as fact and just think that's like, that's it. You know, that's the end of the story when I really don't think that's the end of the story. Thanks, sweet. Gonna get out your detector and get swinging. You wanna bring me out the orc real quick? The XP orc. Do that after you're done. Thank you. You can go grab it real quick. You know no. you're gonna be done with this. No, because once you're gonna have me put that back. You guys wanna say hi to Destiny? Oh, hello. She says, oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. John says eight to nine inches deep. Hey, that's pretty deep, man. yeah that's that's true wisconsin that's that's another thing like when people ask me for example like what machine is best your your uh comment right there kind of perfectly sums it up some of us are coin hunters some of us are relic hunters and some of us are jewelry hunters and some do it all and then i just don't and then destiny says she just does it <laughs> she's the surface finder she only gets the fresh drops on top Appreciate it, girl. This is a good workout, though. Good workout? Yeah. You, you feel like you're back and like in the cold? Yeah. John says, I like it all with the Simplex. All right, you want the Orky? Yes, please. You no, back? you're going to keep this out. Okay. Petro Come says, keep them in line, Destiny. Always. Always. Feel like experimenting a little bit with the ORX real quick. I'm gonna keep the uh, this metal detector out here too, but maybe I'll give Destiny that earring, see if she can spot anything on it. There might not even be a marking on it. And then there's the pull tab destroyer. Yeah, they need to make that an exclusive. I'd call it the pull tab slayer. <laughs> Billy, I thought she was the production assistant. 
yeah grandma kelly that's true too things don't always fall straight down so like if a coin is kind of like on edge they call it in the hole it'll sound weird got the beep stick look how high the sand is piled up right here thanks girl whoa <laughs> Only hill Look at this little guy, yeah. The only sanded hill available. Is he gonna lay out in the sun? Yeah, straight down over yonder. I know you guys probably have no willingness to see this detector in action. This machine's kind of interesting though. Like if you're familiar, I'm not too too familiar with a detector, they call them operating frequencies or like kilohertz, so I don't want to speak too much about it, but like from my basic understanding is a lower frequency hits better on large objects and high conductive signals like silver coins and whatnot. And then apparently a high uh, frequency like a 30 kilohertz or a 70 kilohertz is supposed to hit on like the smaller items and the lower conductive signals. So in theory, you would think it would be a little bit better for like gold, but I don't know. Just pull this thing out real quick. John Bryant says, the buddy calls me the hot wheel king. Marcelo says, it's all right. People are happy when I show them the 50 plus pull tabs I got out of their garden. Sweet. So I think I'm gonna put it in gold mode. And we're just gonna do a little bit of like the dry sand and see how well it hits on the low conductive signals. I think it's on. She's on. Bring this one down to destiny too. Someone's gonna walk off with it. Girl, I needed your help. Ah. Let me just see real quick. Actually, I'll just bring it with me. I'll bring it with me. It's fine. It'll be kind of a pain, but... I want to see if I can hit on a small signal that the Xterra Pro can't hit on, like in real, real world scenario. See if frequencies actually matter. Do frequencies actually matter that much? What's up, 513? Right now I got the uh, Oryx in 57 kilohertz. That's kind of why I like this machine because compared to a lot of my other detectors, like can, considering frequencies and kilohertz, this machine actually can run higher than most of my other machines can. I think this machine can run like 70 kilohertz or something ridiculous. So I think this detector is actually good if you're out there looking for like gold nuggets, you know? I think this is actually kind of like a gold prop prospecting machine. But you'd think... So there's a signal. I'm sure that the Xterra can hit on that one. Let me just see real quick. I was reading like 63. But you would think running like a high frequency in the sand would be kind of like a gold nugget prospecting in a sense. Like if there's any small gold earrings or like really petite gold chains, maybe you would be able to find them and the other machines couldn't. I don't know though. Just a thought. Is that the signal right there? Really bouncy on this machine. Let's dig it out. Where did it go? Please be the gold right here. Iron, wait, what's that? Uh, something off of some fishing equipment, I guess. Looks like a lead sinker with a partial hook in it, maybe? I don't know how that got up here, but okay. I'm probably kind of wasting time uh, messing around with detectors, but I like messing around. Petro says, I love M2 on the Legend. That's multi two, right? It hits on everything. Billy double fisted. Let me shrink this baby down a little bit. I 
This machine, I got the little nine inch coil on it. It's so light. Like if you have shoulder problems or if you got problems swinging a machine, that's one recommendation I would have for you is just to pick up like a light machine. Something you can actually swing around for a while. I'll probably Welp, when I said Welp, when I said stop messing around, I had my uh my GoPro like voice command on and it shut my freaking GoPro off, so that's always fun. I think we're back on now though. Probably lost half the chat again, but yeah, 513, I, I kind of agree. That's how you learn by messing around. Put this thing back up here. Sorry about that, guys. I think I dropped you out again. Shane asks, have you looked into the new Quest Q80? Looks like a solid machine. I've looked into it a little bit because I keep hearing people talk about it. Like, I think that's one way you can kind of tell if a machine is at least decent. Is like, how much chatter patter does it get in the community? The Quest machines have definitely been like up and coming. Right underneath the volleyball net here is where they lose anything if they go for a spike. Norseman, the orcs, I've I've tried to get it a little bit stable. This isn't like the most uh, mineralized beach ever, but I can take it down by the wet real quick and check it out. I think it does have like a salt mode. I was trying to get it to work good by the wet. I think it also maybe depends what frequency you're running it in. Just dragging the freaking Xterra behind me. Come on, buddy. Come with me. Let's go by Destiny. So I spent probably 25 minutes with the volleyball cord. I think I pulled out like five bobby pins and an earring. It's not too bad. Is my machine on? What's our sensitivity at? 90. My disc IAR is at five. Reactivity, turn them down a little bit, two. Check, see you later, John Bryant. What's up, Mikey? This is just joining the live. I'm still on the silver. Got me a silver Figaro necklace. Figaro, Figaro. <laughs> Sounds fancy sounds italian i scored me a little earring out here today i don't know if it's i don't know if it's silver if it's gold if it's platinum if it's freaking made out of pure carbon diamonds or what but sure sounded like some scrap This machine absolutely kills the foil though. If you're looking for aluminum foil, this is it. The Xterra Pro is just getting dragged along. I would love to go to a beach and like actually take two machines and like uh, do real side by side comparisons of real signals, but it's just hard dragging machines around. I might put back the orcs and just use the Xterra. Turn on the Xterra for that one just to experiment. It's kind of giving me a high conductive signal, but it sounded weird. Okay, it's probably a coin. Sounds really good on the Xterra. The thing is when you run a higher frequency though, like especially on the ORX, the higher frequency you run, the worse like modern coin sound. Because I think uh, 
Like usually in that like 10, 15 kilohertz is like sweet spot I think for coins or lower. Or like 10 to 15 kilohertz is a sweet spot to be able to detect like most objects. But once you start to go either too high in frequency or too low, you definitely have the chance at missing like, uh, you know, different signals. What's up, Jim? So I'm gonna have you guys vote real quick. Stick with the Xterra Pro or stick with the ORX. Top vote gets the uh, the choice. Top vote gets the pick. Yeah, I feel like if you hold the machine like a little bit higher up here, it doesn't give you as much strain. But I do want to try out one of those coil, or not coil stoppers, but it's like a stopper. You put, people 3D print them, you put them like right here and it lets your hand like rest up against it so you're not constantly gripping the, the hand grip. All right, we got pro, one for pro, one for orc. Let me bring up both hands so we can count on this one. One pro, one orc, two orc, two pro, three orc, three pro. We're tied right now. Keep on going, everybody. Oh, wait, Petro, you didn't really give me a solid one. I don't know, does that mean the the orc wins? I don't know what wins. I didn't know. Pro, 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 we got another orc. So I think, what wins then? Does the pro win? I don't know, I like letting you guys decide sometimes. I'm always so indecisive. Let's just see how the orcs reacts to this one. It's giving me iron, but also bouncing up to like 52, 29. Let's see if this machine gives us like the same reaction to the signal. Use your gold. Hello. Looks like this machine's not even hitting on it. Let me try a lower frequency maybe, like 14 kilohertz. And then reactivity a little bit lower. Pretty sure it sounds like some scrap. Barely giving me anything though on the uh, the orc. NV says, I can't really read the chat anymore. Crow saying, go, go, go. Just dig it, right? I think it's iron. Might be deep stuff. I'm definitely still learning this machine though. Pretty sure it's iron. Yep. It's like a rusty bolt or something. I guess you gotta take into consideration the uh, Orc or the Xterra has a lot bigger coil on it. What's up, Jephtha? Uh, we've gotten one piece of jewelry so far. Let me try to bring it out. Check this out. I think it's junk, but I don't know for sure. I didn't see a marking on there. Another earring. <laughs> it looks shiny. 
but it sounds so weird on my detector it's like all over the place i have no idea if it's anything good it's probably just silver i don't think it's gold but i didn't see a marking on it so might just be junk yeah what a way to waste time incognito i agree with you <laughs> spend 10 minutes on a rusty rusty screw let's drop this off to destiny might even go wade through the water for a couple of minutes My phone is giving me an extreme glare, so it's kind of challenging to read the chat. I'll try to figure that out. This one's bouncy. See, this is what I think aluminum sounds like on this machine. Let's see if this is actually aluminum. Check this signal out. Can I put you guys closer or what? You probably can't see it. I could be wrong actually. Three, four, eleven, zero. Sounds weird. Out of the hole, six, seven, ten. Fast recovery speed. Was it? Yep, that's the sounds of aluminum right there. The sounds and sights of aluminum foil. What haven't you touched since you got your Knox, Dennis? Vote for the Simplex. Night Sky. We'll bring out the Simplex again soon. I've been neglecting my Simplex, uh, my Simplex users out there. Metal Detecting Northwestern says I bought my wife four metal detectors. She still won't go with me. <laughs> nice, Jephtha. You got a stainless steel down at, uh, the the water of clear marcello says ever since i got my 900 i haven't used anything else <laughs> it's a good idea to get familiar with your machine you know i'm guilty of like not entirely i don't know what i'm trying to say it takes me longer to learn my machines because i go back and forth between a lot of them but When you're basically digging everything at the beach, there's not really... I mean, you can always learn stuff with metal detectors, but... As long as you're in that dig-it-all mindset, you're really not going to skip by anything. I'm not always in the dig-it-all mindset, though. Iron sound. Jep, this is I vote Mikey with the Vanquish. We'll bring out the Vanquish again soon for sure. I got a couple old backed up videos with the Vanquish that I might release probably from like a year ago. I don't know if I will though. I don't think that Bluetooth works with the Xterra, but don't quote me on that. Mr. Prankster says the Pro works better at the park. You're probably right. I feel like a single frequency at 8 kilohertz probably isn't the best for finding like gold at the beach, even though I think it probably will work. Not getting too many signals around here. Is this the tiniest signal in existence? Getting a little squeaker, baby squeaker.
pinpoints barely even hitting on it. It's gonna be a tiny something or another. Uh, I don't really know. Wait, what's that? Is that jewelry? No. <laughs> Not quite jewelry. I think you guys know what that is, right? I'll let you guess. You guys identify that one? Mikey says, I've been pulling in coins next to iron. I'm becoming one with my vanquish. <laughs> Xterra Pro is only ML85. What is that? Like that Bluetooth dongle thing or the wireless dongle? Vanquish is good for the price. Nick asked, do I own a SDC 2300? I've never heard of that one, Nick. What is that? Like a kind of one of those like Amazon uh, metal detectors, one of the cheaper brands, or is that like a higher end machine? Jay Killing says, for a beginner in South Florida, Vanquish or Xterra Pro? <laughs> Are you gonna be hunting mostly the beach? Do you wanna go in the water? Are you sticking mostly to land? What do you want in a machine? <laughs> There's so many questions. I still try to keep open-minded like answers because it, it heavily does probably depend on like what you want in a machine, you know? If you're looking for a waterproof machine, maybe go Xterra Pro. But if you're looking for an absolutely rock solid like uh, experience down by the wet sand, maybe go Vanquish. I don't know. Get a little bit of chatter patter down by the wet. Let's go bring this one to Destiny real quick. We're just messing around today, as usual. What's up? Welcome back, Starburst. He says, I have not commented in a long time. <laughs> the heck's that? Oh, I'm in 15 kilohertz, that's why. See, this is what happens when you try to run this machine out of beach mode. Check this out. It really woke up the beach, huh? It's because it's reading all the sand as a signal. So you gotta be in beach mode. What's up, 8.30? This is hello from Brian in Modesto, CA. Nick says the SDEC 2300 is a compact, high performance, mid range gold detector, perfect for chasing down elusive subgram nuggets on land and underwater. Huh. Yeah, I've never heard of that one, uh, Nick. Who makes it? Do you know, like, what brand makes it? I'm gonna go drop this off to Destiny. Drop her off a detector. I'm gonna drop this right here, all right? You got a close eye on it? Uh-huh. You gonna keep a close eye on it? I'm coming. Yeah. Here you go. Have fun. You. Let's go find a couple more pieces of aluminum foil. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna have you guys vote again one last time. Uh, stick with the dry sand or try the wet sand for a little bit. Try a little bit of in water waiting. Oh, it's a mine lab, huh, Nick? Yeah, I've never actually heard of that one. Nick asks, uh, Nick Clo Cole Claire, or Nick Clo Chloe Claire? I don't know if I will be testing the new Ultra. I don't think they have any plans to send it to me, so 
I might eventually buy one, eventually. <laughs> There's a good signal, finally. 3031. Please, be what we've been waiting for. 3031, it's like the best sounding signal all day. And you know why it was the best sounding signal all day? You're out of your freaking mind. <laughs> all right, we'll go check out the, uh, the wet sand real quick. I probably won't even find one signal in there, but we'll try. Let's go walk over there real quick. I'm at like kind of a, this isn't really like a clear water beach beach. This is like, technically I think this is actually considered a man-made beach. I try not to give away like too, too much, but like most of you guys, if you're locals, you probably already know where this spot is. And if you're not local, it's not like you're going to be coming down here every other day. But uh, yeah, for, for some of you guys who may not know, this is actually like, I think they consider it kind of an adventure park. Uh, that channel, I don't know if you've ever seen that channel, Jigging with Jordan, he's hunted down here before. They have like floating uh, obstacles that kids and stuff play on. So basically though, at this, this beach, um, anything that's dropped in the water basically stays right where it gets dropped because there's not a lot of wave action here. So, Jephthah says, is it busy out there? I'd say... Do a dune tow to surf coil grid, even though I know you don't typically grid. Yeah, this spot, like I was just explaining, Jephtha, there's like a couple people laying out here, but... It's definitely one of those, like, luck-based spots. You just have to swing over the right spot at the right time to find anything. Marcelo, I'm still looking for the gold pull tab. I heard that they actually make them. I saw one on Etsy. They make them out of like 10 karat or 14 karat gold. That would be crazy. That's at the top of my bucket list. Yeah, Apex, it's kind of like a freshwater beach, but I think it's actually brackish or salt water. We're like right by the coast. So I think some of the water from the actual ocean gets into this spot, but... I don't really know. It's definitely a unique spot to hunt. Yeah, Billy says the gold pull tab pendants are a thing. You never know. How you doing, Apex? Whoops. I want to just show you. This is just a small area. I'm going to go down to like the kind of the main area where people actually swim, but... Look how calm the water is right here. It like barely moves, you know? There's not like waves that come through here. Nick, I think it kind of depends on the week. Some days I'll just go out for a quick session, maybe like an hour, two hours. That sounds good. But then sometimes on days that I'm really feeling it, you know, I'll go four hours, five hours, six hours some days. I think it heavily depends on the week, how I'm feeling and like where I'm hunting. 25 to 28. Miss them a couple more times. Sift them out. We in the know know where you are, Scott. Yeah, you probably do. Like I said, anyone local or anyone local has a good idea where this spot is, but there's a half, just a half. I appreciate that, Nick. Let's go make our way over to the water, see if we can get something out of there. Like I said, when you're hunting a spot like this where there's not a lot of wave action, it all comes down to like consistency and being the guy that actually swings their coil over the right spot. That's like all there is to it. And deciding to dig out the signal when and if you actually swing over it. 
That sounds kind of weird. 76, 78. Kind of sketchy sounding. Turn my volume down one. We got a couple people laying out in the dry sand, so I don't want to bother them too much. All right, unfortunate on that one. It's a reality of the hunt though. Seagrams. Jephthah says, I typically can't get past two and a half, three hours. Yeah, it, it depends, man. You're right, like in the heat of the day, I can't get back past like two, two to three hours is like my max. The heat of summer in Florida. Sometimes when I get out on the beach too, unless, uh, I, I don't typically wear sunglasses, but I know that I should. Sometimes I'll get out at the beach and I can't even open my eyes. It's so freaking bright out. All right, you guys that voted, we're still making our way over there. Don't worry. Let's get over there. Dip our toes in the water. Swing a little bit quick on our way, I guess. Twenty-two, right there. <laughs> Another variety of pull tab. That one's folded over in half. Chest deep is where it's at. You're probably right, Billy. Deep is where it's at. You're probably right, Billy. Thinking of which, have you hydrated recently? I have not. Well, actually, about forty-five minutes ago, I did. Uh, Mickey asked, or Mickey or Mikey, I asked, it's used, or what am I talking about? Maybe I need to hydrate. It's called the Garrett All-Terrain Dig Pouch, I think. It's kind of nice. It's like a land and sea type of pouch. Maybe I'll actually show you guys what I'm talking about. For you guys who actually hang out in the live streams, I'll give you a little bit of info on this spot. There's already enough people hunting it and uh, quite a bit of like friendly competition out here, but let me turn you guys up. I'll show you what we're talking about here. Check this out. This is why they call it an uh, adventure park. Check this out. You guys know where this spot is? Just give you a little, if you do, please don't like name it. Don't put it in the comments. Just say yes or no if you know where the spot's at. Check that out that over there too. So this is, this is what I'm talking about. This used to be a, uh, I think it actually used to be an old lime rock mine. Uh, and over the years they dug out the stuff and uh, just recently, maybe within like the last 10 years or something, they brought in sand here and turned it into like a tourist destination or like a local destination. So uh, that channel Jigging with Jordan actually has taken Scooby equipment and went under those floating things over there. He's found like maybe some sunglasses and some assorted nonsense, you know, but uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of a nice little local spot for sure. I try to keep it on the down low because I don't want like everyone hunting this spot because it's like, I like to call it my like, you know, my little local honey hole. But if you guys are in here hanging out with me, you deserve to know where it is. So let's go over here. We'll jump in the water and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Even with this water, like people swim in here, man, where, where they lose their ring is where it stays. Definitely not much wave action here. You okay? Little seagull. Are you okay? 
Oh, that little guy looks maybe hurt. Or maybe he's just sleeping. Maybe he's just sleeping. You all right, little buddy? You good? I don't know if he's okay, if he's just super chilled out or if he's like hurt. Let me bring you back up real quick. What should I do about this seagull? Is there anything I can do? Might just be tired. <laughs> Billy says, oh, that's depleted beach. <laughs> ah, Jephtha says, I know this spot for a long time. I pay attention. <laughs> Diana says, too late. You just gave your honey hole up. The thing is, like, it ain't much of a honey hole. I ain't been finding much here recently. You got to really put in the work to find anything. Is that a signal? Check it out. I'm about to go in this water right here. Dennis says it doesn't look good. <laughs> I'll show you this water section too. Sixty-six. I think we know what that's gonna be. Pretty sure, at least, right? Too far from Long Island. Oh, Dennis, the seagull doesn't look good, huh? Yeah, I think he might be sick or something. He's kind of just—he don't look very good. I think he would have flown away by now. There's a zinc penny. We need to get the old aqua chigger out here for a. Uh, wildlife rescue the chigger would take it on his own to make sure that things are right maybe he got beat up all right so for you water hunters let's go in the water for a little bit we got one penny right there so that's not bad switch it over to beach two that's using the water Switch it over to two-tone. I was running delta pitch before. I think that's what DP means, delta pitch. AT, two-tone. Let's see if there's anything out here in this water, hey? What's up, stink-ass cat? <laughs> Scott says he's fine, don't mess with them. I don't plan on it. There's not much I can do about them. Small signal in there. Might have to turn up my volume a little bit. I don't know. giving me mostly an iron reading a little bit of high conductive or like high squeaker I guess you could call it small signal though see it right there it's an earring back first signal in the water hey I think it's got a marking on it too pretty sure it says 925 right there pretty good for the first signal in the water hey a little tiny thing man I like it it might be depth pitch uh, Marcella I'm not sure I like that man I like that little squeaker signal Yeah, down at Clearwater Beach, I found a little earring back in that, uh, like, wet sand surf line. This beach is not nearly as mineralized as, like, Clearwater is, but there still is a little bit of mineralization here. Okay. Really bouncy signal there, but... Like, it's giving me some negative signals. But this one I'm definitely going to dig up. Okay. 
see if we got it. I'm not sifting these signals out because they sound too small. Sounds kind of good. Bouncy on the target ID though, like 30 to 50. Oh, there it is, everybody. There she blows. Check it out. Check it out. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that's what's up, dude. That did not take long. I wonder if that is the earring from that earring back. Looks gold in color, but I think my eyes are starting to go. I used to be able to read these like markings on them while I'm out here, but I'm not even 30 yet, dude, and I can't even freaking read these. We're getting there, though. It's definitely got a marking on it. It might be gold. It's probably silver, though. Let me try to swing over it with the detector. See what it's reading. The one carat diamond, baby. Very likely, more likely silver than gold, just based on the target ID. 22 probably be ringing like under 10 if it was gold so that's probably a silver earring right there is that the one carat diamond we've been looking for oh nick said the earring might be close and he just said told you <laughs> that's what's up nick all right come on the right place at the right time baby kind of do a thorough job right here like right in the corner listen very closely for any of those faint ones yeah there's these little fish I don't think you guys can see in the water there but I'm pretty sure this spot has got to be like brackish or salt because there's also those needle fish what do they call them like hound fish in here Sounds mostly like iron. We'll skip them up. I like it. I've gotten a couple pieces of jewelry. Double earring day today. I think I only attribute to, like, I only get this jewelry because I'm probably digging up the signals that the other dudes don't want to dig up. <laughs> I don't find too many coins out here recently, but I'm always just digging those, like, odd sounding signals, you know? Really anything I can get a repeatable tone on, I'm digging up. I'm not too picky out here. Might find the pair, we might, Nick. Yeah, that literally was probably from the same earring because I found the earring back first and it was gold colored like that. This one's giving me maybe a little bit of iron in the signal. It's giving me a high tone too though. Is that it right there? That is it, it's a piece of aluminum foil right on the edge of the scoop there. Dennis, that uh, seagull you're talking about, it doesn't look good. Yeah, Incognito says that's highly likely if they're cherry picking for sure. Like sometimes, honestly, I'll even get a signal in the water. I haven't done it in a long time because I haven't hunted much in the water, but like those small signals, they're a pain in the ass to get in the scoop, to sift them out in the scoop. So sometimes I'll almost be like 90% sure it's an earring or like a small, decent signal, and I'll just give up on it because it's taking too long to dig. You know, sometimes you have to think like that, like if there is a lot of signals at a beach, is it worth like stopping for every small, tiny, scrappy signal when there could be bigger and better ones out there? 
it's always like a, a mind game I think there's always options when you're metal detecting you know I never think that there's like a right or a wrong way to do it is that something incredibly deep I gotta go for this one because it's like it's giving me a faint signal but it's definitely repeatable it's telling me there's something under there 32 23 85 negative 7 try to take a couple scoops on them it could be the deep gold doubloon Could be deep iron or something too. <laughs> uh, very hard to pinpoint. Might just give up on them. Let's take a couple more scoops out. Just in case. Tough one though. Wait. I think it's out of the hole. It's probably some junk. I think I see it. There it is. Just a little piece of an aluminum seal there. It's not too bad though. For running eight kilohertz, man, it seems to do okay on the low conductive signals. Yeah, Mikey, that's the one thing that I really don't like about this machine too, is the numbers are just very jumpy. Like I, I claim right now, this is pretty much a dig it all type machine. Unless you're maybe like cherry picking for coins and high conductive signals. I think the 8 kilohertz means it doesn't identify on the low conductive signals well. I don't know if it's just the low frequency that's causing it, but because I was running the XBRX earlier and like if you run a high frequency, it won't ID the coins well. So I'm thinking maybe it just runs like too low of a frequency maybe to like identify the aluminum accurately. I don't know. It's good to me that it's able to run like relatively stable in this water though. Like this isn't the most uh, salted in spot. Like I said, it's not the most mineralized beach, but. I have a real hard time like getting my simplex to run smooth in this water. So I just turned it from 21 sensitivity to 18. Twenty fifty-three. This might be a recoverable signal. Sounds small again, though. Not it is it the crustiest zinc I've ever seen in my existence I don't know if that was it pretty sure it's honestly there's like a tie down right here for this rope I think that's what it is Jephthah says, I try to dig everything, but at a certain point I get tired of digging trash and start picking and choosing based on signal solid sol solidity. That's a good method, Jephthah. I'm probably right about there with you. I'll dig all scrappy aluminum signals until I'm like just defeated. <laughs> then I'll start to maybe get a little bit more picky. 
like I guess sometimes it depends if there's like a lot of signals to choose from a lot of the the reason I'll just choose to dig the scrappy ones is because there's not a lot of other like uh, better solid signals around but there is like an odds game too that I like to play every now and again if you're digging up high conductive signals the odds are it's probably just gonna be like a coin or there's a chance of silver jewelry too but then when you're digging up like low conductive signals, the odds are either it's probably going to be aluminum foil, nickel, a pull tab, or the gold, you know? So I definitely like taking the chance for the gold. Incognito says, I'll use any machine anyone wants to send me. Woodland says, I'm a land hunter, but I don't, and I don't know much about the beach, but I try the beach every once in a while, but never any luck. Any tips? Consistency. Uh, I like to say consistency and what's that other word? Freaking. Uh, you have to be optimistic. Optimism and persistence is like the key to success at the beach for me, at least. Like you don't find much or your machine doesn't work good at the beach. Because if you're not finding much, it really is just a matter of time. You have to spend a lot of time and dig up a lot of junk to have the chance, I think. Andreas, Andreas is where I live. Metal detecting Kate takes all kinds of permits. Yeah, they love to make money however they can, man. Marcelo, I'll send you a pinpointer duct tape to a stick. <laughs> What's up, Ishman? Seems like that little corner spot was like the hot spot. Norseman says, I liked what I saw of testing history Re revisited did with the Simplex Ultra. All that new functions on it. Simplex treated me good for a long time. I think if I didn't have a, a YouTube channel, honestly, I probably wouldn't have as many metal detectors. I like using the new metal detectors to show people, you know, give them an idea at least how it works out. I do like to try it myself, like experiment with it, but Simplex would probably be my like top park pick if I never got a legend or anything like that. Simplex with the elliptical coil has always treated me good. Incognito says, uh, I only cherry pick in really trashy areas. Yeah, that's probably about my method too, Incognito. Cause like, like I've mentioned this before, the more I metal detect, the more I realize it's kind of an odds game when you're digging up like, especially scrappy signals and whatnot. Tiny signal here, let's try to get it out. Like if you show up to a spot that is completely littered with say a certain variety of pull tab like those old ones with the uh, the tails on them they call them beaver tails you can kind of familiarize yourself with the target IDs of those beaver tails and choose not to dig up those signals you know now there could be a gold ring hi hidden in there right with those signals but if you're playing the odds game <laughs> The odds are likely that it's just going to be, you know, another pull tab or another beaver tail. So you can start to dig up like different signals and maybe increase your chances at finding something different at least. I don't know. This one's tiny. It's going to be the earring that got away, I think. have it try to take it up to shore real real quick if I don't have it we'll move on and uh, nope I sure don't I'm missing it it's missing in action 
All right, put us on a better one though. 80. There she blows. Might be like my second coin in the water. Modern day dime. Incognito, so is there a reason to play the lotto? <laughs> Try this shallow area for a second. Maybe even the wet sand line. Let's pull this out, iron. This is iron for some karma points. Wait, is it a high conductive though? Probably just iron. So we've definitely at least gotten silver today, which is nice. This thing is tiny. No way. Holy moly, dude. This is our signal in the water. The tip of a fish hook right there. You can see the barb on it. The tip of a fish hook. <laughs> Mikey says, I don't play the odds game, I dig everything. So you do play the odds game then. <laughs> the odds of digging everything is, it's going to be a 90% chance that it's going to be all trash and the rest of the 10% might be something good. <laughs> Now, like, same with the pennies. I think of, like, penny signals as an odds game. Like, when you're digging up penny signals, there's probably, like, a 90% chance that it's a penny. But then there's the 10% chance that it could be a little ring or an oddity, you know? I'll try this wet sand real quick, too. Big old craters and stuff. It's pretty obvious people have been playing down here real quick usually don't have much luck at the wet sand at this place but we'll hop back in the water for a second never hunted Fort Island Scott what's the cycle I, I hear people say that I hear Monterey magnet man say that too is that like all of the change is that the cycle penny dime nickel and a quarter this thing sounds massive I'm gonna guess like somebody's soda can or like a toy car on this one maybe. You guys wanna take a guess real quick? Dennis says I'm burned out on trash. Let's see what we got under here. Yep, there it is. It was like quarter dime, nickel, and a penny. I don't think I found a nickel. Found a couple pennies, couple dimes. I'm not sure if I've gotten a quarter yet. I cleaned out this spot last time I was here of quarters. Pulled a buttload of quarters out of here last time. Yeah, I don't think I've hit the cycle then. Billy says, if they come, you drop it out. Oh, if they come, you drop it, you're out like $180. Tiny signal. Barely giving me a beep. Is it out? Hmm. 
seagulls are coming out to attack. Billy says it's not an earring. I don't know about this one. Kind of investigating them. Let's see. Three recovery speed, maybe. You hear it? A little signal in there. I give up on this one. Challenging. Tiny little thing. One more scoop on them and then we'll give up. Nope. All right. You fill that baby in. Let's jump back in the water, I guess. Water was treating us decently. All right. Pull up the chat again real quick. My phone keeps going black. Uh, Marcelo says, uh, guessing the other half of the fishing hook, probably. Billy says, hit the button, pretend it's a shovel. X marks the spot, says Martin. Heather says, I fished out there also. Really curious about the detecting there. Oh, are you talking about, uh, which one was it? What Scott was talking about, right? Yo, stink ass, man. Heck yeah. That's right, dude. Stink cat. Appreciate that, stink cat. Let's keep going. I'm not sure like how long my camera's gonna last. I think because it's cut off a couple times, it's not gonna go dead at an hour and five minutes. I think we might already be past an hour and five minutes, but I don't know when it's gonna cut out now. <laughs> Just kind of dangerous. I lost connection a couple times out here, so I'm glad it's still working, man. I'm gonna turn it back to two recovery speed in the water. 20 sensitivity right now. Billy says, lazy people hit the thumbs up. Appreciate that, Billy. You ain't gotta throw shade though. I, it's all right. People just don't like my content. They come to watch, but they don't like it. I understand. It's like one of those love-hate relationships, you know? Even though you don't like the content, you come anyways, because you probably don't have much else to do. <laughs> or you'd probably like to be out there detecting, right? But something is preventing you from being out there detecting right now. Marcellos is off, comes and asks, how's the beach? Oh, get my pulse dive vibrating and say pleasant. <laughs> Marcello. I'm gonna turn it down one sensitivity. 19, it seems like 18, 19 in the water or down by the water has been the sweet spot. I think I was running like 18 at clear water by the surf too. Spot is all about swinging over the right spot at the right time, man. I found some decent rings out here. I don't know if I've ever found a gold ring in the water. I found a couple gold rings at this place, but they've been mostly in the dry sand. I think my most recent gold was actually like, like right where the, the water breaks, like where the water ends and the wet sand begins. Dirt Devil says good lunchtime content. Appreciate that Dirt Devil.
kind of chill out here. Wading through the water is always kind of relaxing. It's actually pretty nice too down here temperature wise. <laughs> Brendan and Scott are getting in a battle. I do see guys hunting in this water occasionally. I've seen a couple guys up here with wetsuits. There's one. But like, just check out the target ID before we dig it up. Getting a 20, negative three, 33, 16. I have no idea, dude. Scrap. I'm gonna try to sift this one out, but it's probably not gonna happen. It's giving me like a little bit of iron in with it too. My end goal for sand scoops is one of those extreme scoops that has like the jewelry catch in it. I like this little CKG scoop, but the target's too small, it just falls through the holes, which I think just happened. Oh no. Is it in there? I think I lost it. Dang it, dude. Wait. It's giving me a little iron, but I can't trust this. I can't trust it, you know? Try. Don't fall out, don't fall out. Try to catch it in my hand. Let's see, is it still in there? No. I don't know if this one's worth chasing. One more scoop on it. Small signal for sure. I always say one more signal and it turns into like 20. It's not it, is it? No. <laughs> That's not chain, right? Might give up on that one. What do you guys think? I can keep battling it if you want. Kind of want to. I hate when a signal defeats me in the water. I freaking hate these little baby signals. It's either a gold earring or a piece of iron or a piece of aluminum foil. It's so hard to tell. Dude. All right, I think we're gonna give up. Give up, battle onward, break out the snorkel. I know I need to break the snorkel out for this one, huh? If I didn't have my shoes, sometimes I'll actually use my toes. I know that's weird, but that's like real pinpointing skill, dude. Picking up little tiny uh, signals with your toes. Let's keep going, let's go onward. Nick says battle. I'll leave that one for you, Nick. That was probably the gold earring or the gold chain we just skipped over. Freaking A. Andy says, if you do beaches a lot, it's a godsend. What, the, uh, the jewelry thing? Oh, Scott says, I can't justify a scoop that costs more than the machine. <laughs> I thought like that for a long time, but now that I'm like getting to the point where I'm pretty much done with new machines, I think a, a better sand scoop would have been a better purchase, at least for me, than like another detector. There's a good one. Listen to that, big boy. Could be a penny, but that could be our ring right there. Nice solid signal. 
this one sounds big enough that we can like skip it or sift it through 70 come on baby please don't be a penny don't be a penny I'm very happy that it didn't end up being a ring because you guys would have thought that was suspicious as ever it is just a crusty zinc unfortunately but kind of fortunate if the live stream ended right there and I pulled up a ring that would have been like some X finds moment right there so I think with that one being said I'm probably just gonna end the stream right here everybody um, just cuz like the th keeps dropping out I'm having fun but I think I'm about done with the stream we just lost half of our crowd my connection's getting a little bit shoddy I think so I hey, appreciate you guys hanging out with me here I might just keep you on actually why not I'm gonna stay in here so if the live stream ends though again I think I'm just gonna keep it off I'm really risking my phone here in the water Maybe hang out here for a second until the live drops out again. Yeah, we were right in it, man. We were right on the best signal and my freaking connection drops out. Billy says, go find my destiny. We'll get out of here in a second. Ooh. definitely giving me uh iron <laughs> what's up julie p i don't know if the seagull has moved i might have to go check on him again here in a second how you doing julie says i'm new just got on i'll hang with you appreciate it if you guys uh if you left and came back that banger signal we were getting unfortunately it was just a penny it lagged me out right when we dug it up That one sounds sketchy. We'll go check out that seagull terma. Make sure it's still all right. I think it might be there still though. I think it's probably like on its way out. Might be something wrong with them. If he passes on, we can give him a grave with our sand scoop, but. I don't know if there's like a place around here that would take a seagull, like a hurt seagull. Like I said, we need the old aqua cheeker here, man. He would have them scooped up. He would have them in the back of the truck. Crusty hair tie right there. Dirt Devil says, watch for the email I sent. It may be something of interest to you. Appreciate that, Dirt Devil. I'll check it out. I'm guilty of not checking my email very often, so I need to go check that out. Burial at sea, Billy says. I think he would want to be buried here. If anything, they might just like throw him in the trash or something. I don't know if they'd actually bury him or what. Probably iron, but it's give me a little bit of a high tone on it. Check it out. Bottle cap, maybe? No? It's too small again. Or is it? What is it? Is that it? 
Is that it? That might be it. Let's see? I'm gonna give it a maybe. <laughs> Struggling out here. I think that was it. Little tiny piece of iron of some type. Uh, WLT Wiz says thanks for the videos. Thanks for stopping in, dude. I'm at that point in time, too, where I need to blow my nose. It happens every time I'm on the beach. It's my sinus is going. Scoop and dump on the bank if the hole is clear. That's always a good tip, Billy. Iron. I mean, for what? What is the Xterra Pro, though? Like 269 bucks or something. It's a pretty good uh, discount machine or like... Would you call it an entry level machine at this price? I don't know what you quite call it. Swing right here in this line where the water breaks. Joyce asks, what's your best machine? Sorry, I missed that question before, Joyce. What's my best machine? I don't know. I guess my like initial thought would probably be the Deus 2, but I feel like it's not like it doesn't have that much of an edge on my other machines, you know? Like the Equinox, I've always had a good time with the Equinox. Been having a pretty good time with the Legend recently. Even the Vanquish, man. I like the Vanquish. I don't know. That's a tough question. What do you guys think? Pick out of any of my machines. What's my best machine? I A lot of people would say uh, the machine that you're most comfortable using or the machine that you're most comfortable swinging. I probably agree with that. My best machine is like the one I'm most confident with at the moment. Tiny signal there. Aluminum or gold? Let's see what we got. Tiny little signal here. This one's going to be aluminum. Uh, Nick says, but again, it is a seagull. I have seen them survive with one leg. Yeah, I do see those too. Terma says, persistent and enjoyment, the human machine. <sighs> yeah.
Yeah, I think he's dying, everybody. I hate to give you the truth, but I think the poor guy is dying or dead. He's still just hanging out. What can I do? Is there anything I can do? Is there like a number you can call or it's just a seagull? Either he's dying or he's got a hangover from last night. Poor little guy. I'm meandering again. I'm I'm known to meander. I've only had one bar on my uh, Xterra for a while. Are you okay, little guy? I don't want to mess with him. Look at this poor little thing. I think he's probably fighting to stay alive, unfortunately. I don't know what could have happened to him. Poor little dude. I guess the shark or the massive crab is going to come up on shore. He'll have a, a meal. Yeah, that's what Scott says. Circle of life. Tastes like chicken, Billy says. I got a Weber back at the house. <laughs> Heather says, local wildlife rescue. Would they take him? Bird flu, be careful. Give him some water, Andrea says. Yeah, he's definitely not having a very good time. I'm not sure if the guys out here, there's like county employees out here that definitely, they ride around their little like ATVs and stuff. Yeah, Billy, you might be right. That seagull, he's probably just depressed with recession, less fries. <laughs> you pay the same, or you pay more, but you get the same amount of double cheeseburger. That's a really good one. Yeah, less fries. That makes sense. More sense to me now. Less people are throwing them out fries. There it is. Closer to the cycle, baby. I think we just need a nickel. A nickel and we will have completed the cycle. Crusty quarter. Toby. What's up, Toby? He says, look up bird emergency aid in your area. I'm gonna have to end the stream here probably in a minute. Or maybe we'll put Destiny on the job. You think Destiny wants to take up the job? Is she watching right now? She might be interested. We actually just rescued a little freaking, I don't know if I'd even call it a rescue. It's always like controversial, but maybe I'll just leave it at that. We don't want to get too controversial up in this baby. Uh, Marty says, Florida wildlife will take him if they're not already up to their eyeballs like they always are here. And yeah, bird flu is a thing. Seagulls are like pigeons to most rescue places. Dime a dozen. Poor little guy. He looked like a grandpa. He could have little grandbaby seagulls. They might need him. I'm gonna be honest, I hunt this place like out though, cause it's only so big. I hunt this place pretty consistently. You have to be consistent to find the goods here. Like when I first got into metal detecting, this was like my main beach, dude. I'd come up here like every two days I remember for a while I was on a jewelry streak at this beach. I remember going like seven days in a row or something, jewelry every day. Heather says, uh, I just hunt my yard right now. Wait, I see a shiner right on top. Look at this signal right on top. I see it. Three. That could be good. I see it right there, baby. Oh, what is it? You see it? Can you guys see it shining in the sand? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yes, sir. 
Another stud, dude. That's three earrings today. That one might be gold. That one actually might be gold. That one I think is gold. It's got a marking on there. Holy smokes. Please be a diamond. Please be a real diamond in there. That thing was visible. Like, that thing was visible. You could see the diamond shimmering in the freaking sand. Let me see real quick. Dude. That's what's up, baby. Look at this. Look at the target ID. Five, three, two. That is almost guaranteed gold just by the target ID alone. Two. Come on, baby. I like to see it. I see a marking, but like I said, I can't see like, I cannot see out here in the sun. I think it might say 14K on it though. I think we just got a little bit of gold, baby. That's what's up. I was about to call it too. That's like three or four pieces of jewelry. All earrings though today. What's up with the freaking earrings, man? I mean, I can't complain. I'll take what I can get, but... Give me that in ring form. That would feel so much better. Little gold studs do feel good, but... That's what I'm talking about, baby. Billy says my Knox 800 Solid 3 was a 10K stud. Yep. Sounds about accurate. Billy, yeah. It says now give the guy a thumbs up, will ya? <laughs> was that at least worth it? Is this the back right here? Listen, listen to that one. One, four. Come on. Come on, little Johnny. Little Jenny. Little, just change it from little Johnny to little Jenny. Come on, little Jenny. Mm, no. <laughs> that one's the more realistic freaking aluminum i was giving me almost the same signal though that's what i'm talking about baby bill crow asked which detector that you use are you most comfortable with i think recently bill i'm the most comfortable at the parks with the legend and the elliptical coil maybe the simplex too i'll honestly say i'm probably about as comfortable with the simplex and then at the beach recently, honestly, I have been getting familiar with the Deus 2, like, pitch tones. So I hate to say it, but I'm probably most comfortable and confident with the Deus on the beach. But I think the Equinox is a close second, or the Vanquish. Dream Crushing Aluminum CZ says. What's up, CZ? Let me check around that spot again real quick. That one didn't have the back on it though, so like sometimes I'll find in the dry sand earrings with the backing still on, and you almost know for sure that they took them out of their ear to not lose them. Come on, baby, right there. Five, one, two. The odds are it's foil though. Yep. More foil. Peace to a little hug. Dream crushing aluminum. You're right, Jephthah. That's what I like to see. I'm up here kind of by the volleyball nets again. So I think I'm going to stick with the dry sand for a little bit. The thing is, jewelry can just be anywhere, man. There's not always like a reason why it has to be somewhere. Probably aluminum or junk. Yep. Another little tiny seal right there. Piece of foil. Another piece to a little hug. I like it. It's giving me exercise. I need it. Dig it out, dude. This place seems like it doesn't get too, too busy on weekdays. It's weekends that it's absolutely popping. Like this place reminds me of Clearwater Beach on weekends. <laughs> I 
think I'm going to skip over that one. It sounds pretty big, pretty deep. Just meandering again underneath the volleyball nets. I think though guys, I really gotta go blow my nose. So I think I'm gonna end it right here. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I know I hate to end it like that, but yeah, Jimmy says, have you got a cold? I don't have a cold. I just, uh, when I'm out at the beach for like an hour or two, my sinuses start to act up and I really have to blow my nose. So <laughs> I think I'm gonna go to the car and do that. So appreciate you guys hanging out with me today though. I'd say it was a pretty good freaking day. Um, let me see real quick. I emptied my pouch completely before I came out here. So let me just see real quick. Let's try not to lose our stuff. Give you a very quick little uh, wrap up of a few of the things we got today. A couple pull tabs. We didn't get a nickel though. We didn't complete the cycle. Check this out though. This was the first earring we found on the day. I'm still not sure about that one. It's probably junk, honestly, but you can't be sure, you know, you gotta test that baby. Uh, a little piece to like, uh, the heck is that? Fishing pole? You know we always got to get the corona out here. This actually was still in my pouch. This is like a little gemstone from I think a tot lot. Some junk. This one we found in the water if you guys weren't hanging out with us. We found an earring back first and then we got this earring in the water. I think these are silver but I'm not 100% sure. Let me show you that recent one. A couple pull tabs, aluminum foil. Actually my scrap is in here. This is more of like my scrap aluminum and nonsense. Pull tabs, beaver tails. Big old thing of Coors Light. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm actually afraid to lose this stuff, so I think I'm just gonna put it back in the pouch. There it is right there. I'll probably do a short version of this long live stream, so if you guys didn't catch the full video, don't worry. I'll uh, like kind of shorten it down and put this into short format for you. But I gotta get to the car, dude. My nose is absolutely running up a storm. So appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed the hunt. Oh, I'm gunked up, everybody. So I appreciate that again, uh, Cat Stank. You're a real one. Jephthah, man. Appreciate you. You're a real one. Heather, thanks for stopping in. Marty. Scott C. <laughs> Metal detecting CZ kid, Nick, Billy. Thank you guys a whole bunch for hanging out with me and before too long.